Well, he wraps up his prayer. This goes on for quite a few verses. And he says, in the future, God, foreigners who not, do not belong to your people, Israel, will hear of you. All the people of the earth will come to know you and respect you just like your own people, Israel, do. That was the intent. That was the plan. God wanted the people of Israel to be his followers, and then he would bless them. And he said, then all the nations around will watch and see that following God is a good idea because, you know, it's like really works out. And you get blessed. And then they would believe in God, too. They would say, well, Israel's God must be the true God. Then. Didn't work out that way a lot of the time. As a matter of fact, all of the things that he prays about happen. And this whole book is kind of written uh, several hundred years later after this temple that they had built had been sacked, burned, pulled down, and destroyed. And this was one of the most painful things to the Jewish people is, oh man, they took down the temple, they took the ark of God. I mean, how can this happen? And the book of First and Second Kings are like the autopsy on, you know, how did this die? How did our nation die? And this was the vision. This was what was supposed to happen. He says, these people from other lands, they too will know that this temple honors your name. And he sums it up in verse 60 at the end of the chapter. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no one else. That's so it's interesting. What we have here is really the essence of what the temple is. Yes, it, it is a picture of the dwelling place of God. It is called the house of God, the dwelling place of God. And in that sense, it's well pictured, uh, uh, well fits the uh, New Testament, the picture of the, of the people of God who are indwelt with the Spirit of God. And so we're like the dwelling place of God. But really, I don't think that's the heart of the issue. The main thing, and, and what comes across in, in Solomon's prayer here, is that the temple is not mainly just the dwelling place of God. It is a statement. It is actually a testimony. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to teach something. People come to the temple to learn what God is like. To learn how they can get in with God. How they can be accepted by God. And that's what the temple is supposed to do. So also that part fits perfectly with what the temple has become in our day. The body of Christ. That as a matter of fact, people are supposed to be able to come to the body of Christ and, and learn about God there and see what God's like. Because of the way that he is manifested through the people that he indwells. That our lives, you know, kind of like show people. I was talking to a guy a little while back, and he was telling me, you know, I don't even, I don't even believe in Jesus at all, but he says, I really like the people here. And uh, they're, they're very special. You know, and I was like, dude, do you, really, do you think the people here are any different than anyone else? There's no difference. The, what you're sensing, these are not special people. What you're sensing is the presence of God. It's the Lord that you're sensing here. And this is why they seem different and special. Well, of course, I, I, don't, think he, uh, I don't think he bought into that. But that, that's really what he was seeing. I mean, he was, he was seeing a statement, a testimony being born, which is I come into the presence and there's something different about these people. I have to admit, I saw it as a non-Christian. I didn't at that point appreciate it I remember being so mm, just annoyed oh uh, on edge when I went to uh, Bible studies and the Christians there and I was very cynical of course I, I completely uh, scoffed at the idea of people uh, they would uh, oh they they put on their little happy faces and they were just like oh brother or sister and they would sing their little songs and all that and just be like oh this is so, this is just, just disgusting. And it bothered the hell out of me, you know, because I, would, I was like, this is so false. This is so fakey and stuff like that. I don't think it was, actually. It was just that 
I was sensing something there and my spiritual radar was warning me you know if you give in to this uh, I could sense where this was leading was submission to God something I really wasn't into I had my own life agenda at that point submitting my life to God I don't think so and so it bothered me and that can happen some people can just be actually just repelled by the presence of the Holy Spirit and seen in the, in the people of God, but others are drawn to it and sense, man, it's, it's like you guys have something real here. There's, a, you know, there's something in your life. I want that too. And that's exactly what should be happening because the temple is, is supposed to declare the reality of God all the way to the ends of the earth. So that all nations will, will uh, know him as he says that the Lord is God and there is no one else up here. He's, he is the only one here. He's the only real and true living God. And there you have the significance of the temple.